Bioshock released in 2007 and was so successful that it garnered a remaster in late 2016 as part of the Bioshock collection, alongside its sister games, Bioshock 2 and Bioshock Infinite. But what made this game so successful? Is it still worth a play if you haven't already? Well, let me answer a simple question. Should you play Bioshock in 2020? Bioshock at its core is a first-person shooter. You will mostly be using guns to deal damage as you crawl through its environments, but it does borrow elements from several other genres, from survival horror to sci-fi to role-playing. This combination provides a unique experience. While not for the faint of heart, its storytelling is all its own, and it will immerse you in a world so deep you could dive into it for hours on end. What you'll probably notice first is the environment itself. After you start the game falling out of the sky in a plane crash, you'll swim into a lighthouse and descend into the depths of the giant underwater city of Rapture. Rapture was intended initially to be an isolated utopia, but by the time you arrive in 1960, its tunnels are crumbling, its grand areas have fallen into a state of disrepair, and its inhabitants have been driven entirely crazy. Rapture will lead you through tight, claustrophobic underwater tunnels with the constant fear of the pressure of the depths surrounding you, and then bring you out into dilapidated grand halls with golden statues or dark rooms with enemies lurking in every shadow. Due to the cramped nature of most of the environments and the steampunk cross 1960s design, the game areas have aged surprisingly well. You won't feel like you're playing a photorealistic modern AAA title, but it certainly doesn't feel dated. The environments also play perfectly into the atmosphere of a broken utopia and help to emphasise the survival horror inspired sections of the game and give this game a character uniquely its own. As mentioned earlier, Bioshock is, primarily, a first person shooter. As you crawl through the levels you'll upgrade from a wrench to a pistol, shotgun and so on. However, it also introduces you to plasmids. Plasmids are what add a bit of sci-fi to the game allowing you to shoot lightning, burst fire from your hands or use telekinesis to throw projectiles back at your opponents, all with the click of a button. This mechanic is so integral to the gameplay loop, that Bioshock breaks from tradition on controllers and has plasmids as your left trigger rather than what would traditionally be the button to aim. This allows for fast switching from plasmid uses to gunshots or vice versa, but can take some getting used to. Plasmids can be used to combo with your guns or melee attacks, such as the encouragement early, to use a one-two punch of electrocuting an opponent with your plasmid and then slamming them with your trusty wrench. But on top of this, these plasmids also work off of the environment. While water and oil spills may seem somewhat obvious signs to the experienced gamer, a good combination of environmental hazards with the right plasmid can really enhance your experience. This encouragement, in addition to somewhat limited ammo resources, stops the game becoming a simple shooter grind and these environmental hazards certainly don't feel out of place in the leaking, broken Rapture. But what about the inhabitants of Rapture? Most of your communication initially comes from Atlas, a mysterious figure who urges you to help him save his family, while trying to keep you alive and guiding you as you explore Rapture for the very first time. Atlas will warn you of the ruler of Rapture, Andrew Ryan, who seems to have been integral to the downfall, and is not intent on letting you run around alive and unchecked. Ryan will use security systems against you, and his allies will serve as mini-bosses early in the game, such as the crazed cosmetic surgeon J. S. Steinman. Most of the other inhabitants of Rapture have already gone totally crazy, and are now what is known as splicers. Splicers come in several types. Early on, these will mostly be of the thug and leadhead type, who will use melee weapons and pistols respectively. There are many more for you to discover later on, all with unique abilities and playstyles for you to learn to play around. Splices are also what provide most of the creepiness of Rapture, from crying over prams to lurking in dark doorways and waiting for you to come through. They can even move around the environment in the dark to keep you on edge or catch you with a jump scare. The other major inhabitants are Big Daddies and Little Sisters. Big Daddies are iconic, in their huge diving suits with a drill for a hand, and featuring much of the artwork around Bioshock. They're the de facto mascots of the game, and intimidating opponents, as this poor splicer finds out early in the game.
they also function as the guards for the little sisters, who are creepy little girls with glowing red eyes, referring to the dead as angels. While you may feel sympathy for them initially, don't get too close, or you will learn to fear the wrath of their big daddy protectors. But the story of Bioshock is what truly separates this game from other games of its generation. While I will be avoiding spoilers, I can say this is one of the few games that uses plot devices, in particular foreshadowing, to make you feel compelled to play through at least a second time. I can almost promise that your second playthrough will feel completely different from the first, as you notice the nuance of the plot that you may have skimmed over on your first run. Its twist is one of the most notoriously impactful of its generation, and if you've somehow avoided spoilers up to this point, would you kindly play this blind on your first time through? The political nature of its plot is not lost either, and as a huge fan of dystopia I would be lying if I said I wasn't biased towards the world that it creates, and I would be naive to not draw parallels with totalitarianism. Ryan works as a dictator for Rapture, and even early his paranoia is clear, as he is intent that you're a KGB or a CIA spy, and does everything he can to protect his precious Rapture, even as it falls apart around him. But why would you not play this game. While its combination of genres is interesting and unique, it never particularly specialises. It ends up being a jack of all trades, but a master of none. The shooting feels clunky compared to modern games, which is somewhat to be expected from a game developed in 2007, and switching from plasmid to gun could feel much, much smoother. The aim on controller tends to drag significantly, and the crosshair is too wide to allow for pinpoint shooting for the average gamer. Equally, the creeping dread it creates is fantastic, but its jump scares and terror can fall flat. The jump scares can feel cliché, and anyone experienced with the horror genre will be well accustomed to its mediocre offerings. While its story could rival most role-playing games, the plot is very one-sided and directed to you, rather than being played through you. Character progression is mostly tied to the guns you pick up, and customization is fairly limited, so despite intended customization from perks you can obtain, they don't end up feeling very impactful to the gameplay loop. The environment stylistically is fantastic, and may not have aged, but it can feel somewhat linear. While this is to be expected from a game playing out underwater, the hand-holding can feel a little extreme sometimes, and that nagging arrow at the top of your screen means you're rarely encouraged to explore Rapture more widely, which I cannot encourage enough, as the level design does end up having a brilliant level of detail. So should you play Bioshock in 2020? If you've not played it before, yes, go and play it now. The story is something to behold, and despite its occasionally clunky old gameplay mechanics, it's well worth grinding through. If you have played the game, is it worth another run? For me, absolutely. I adore this game. But for the average person, possibly not. If you've not played it twice, I can recommend it for the story foreshadowing being a wonder to behold. But more than that, there's not a huge amount of replay value from different builds, and the only decisions end up not feeling meaningful enough to the gameplay itself. If you haven't explored it before, Rapture is a fantastic place to spend some time, and if you have, I welcome you to do as I have, and once more dive into its fantastic depths.